Have you ever pretended to be somebody else? What about pretending to be a different race? Would that be offensive or funny? Well, in Spike Lee's Black Klansman, the main character does exactly that. It's an interesting concept, but how does it translate to the screen? Let's go. Black Klansman stars John David Washington, Adam Driver, Laura Harrier, and Topher Grace. It's based on the true story of Officer Ron Stallworth, who infiltrates the local chapter of the KKK. This is a social commentary that delves deep into race relations in America. Now, even though the movie is set in the 70s, it still deals with a lot of the same stuff we deal with today and are currently dealing with as a culture. And it also brings in some of the racially insensitive verbiage and vernacular of today's society put into the film. So it just it does a really good job of tying us in and drawing us into that time using things that are very, very familiar to us. John David Washington is outstanding in his portrayal of Stallworth. He is highly intelligent, well-spoken, and a, just a great detective. And it's funny to watch him as he tries to navigate both the white and the black worlds, and sometimes he doesn't fit in either. Adam Driver is one of the detectives that works with Stallworth, and he is a white Jewish man, and he becomes the embodiment of Ron Stallworth, who goes into the meetings of, KK, of the KKK. One of my favorite scenes with Adam Driver is when he and John David Washington are talking back and forth, and they're trying to get a vernacular down and a way of speech down so that when Adam Driver goes in person to meet the KKK, he doesn't sound wildly different than Washington does on the phone. And so you have this melding of the two and they go back and forth. And so as John David Washington portraying Ron Stallworth, as Stallworth is talking, Adam Driver is sitting there repeating it and emulating it. And they just go back and forth and it gets faster and faster and faster. And it truly does, you watch it morph and progress until they don't, they don't sound identical but they sound really close to each other. And it becomes a convincing that, you know what? Adam Driver playing this when he's doing this voice and speaking like this, he could actually pull it off. Laura Harrier, who you might recognize as Liz from Spider-Man Homecoming, is the president of the Black Student Union in Colorado Springs. And she is amazing at this. She is very convincing and she's very likable too because she is driven and smart and truly believes what she is, uh, what she's promoting and how she's leading her friends. Topher Grace plays David Duke. And at the very beginning when I see him in the film, I thought he was almost a little too young to be playing this character. Like I had the mental image of Eric Foreman in my head and I couldn't get it out for a little bit. It was just, it was there. And so I'm hearing this young guy with a mustache talk and it was just like no dude you're like 16 but as it went on he became more and more convincing and I truly bought into him as a character of David Duke now in my head I have David Duke as this really this strong charismatic type person but he at least in the movie he's not he's this weak-minded just kind of a nobody and he kind of stumbles upon himself and stumbles through his words and everything but he just has a whole bunch of morons following him and so hey if you're the king of the morons then good on you it amazed me as i was watching this at how the scenes and the settings really encapsulated the 1970s. Like they would have long stretches where they're going down streets and you know, car chase or just walking down the street or anything else. And it wasn't like you just took this small little clip of a street and okay, so you replace a couple cars and you're good to go in a modern neighborhood. No, no, this actually looked like it was transformed, like we had been teleported back into the time to 1970s. The film quality had a really nice warmth to it and it added to the nostalgia feeling of that. And while it didn't have a whole lot of grain to it, which was nice because then it's not gritty or anything else, you still have this really great high def picture. It just transported us back to that time and it made it feel, everything that we were seeing, made it feel more authentic and genuine. Now there aren't a lot of films that should be required viewing in school, but Black Klansman is definitely one of them. It is hilarious and heartbreaking all at the exact same time. There's a scene towards the end of the film that just had my stomach turning because it kept switching back and forth between a meeting of the Black Student Union and they're having just this talk and this discussion and telling a story of, of history and then you have it juxtaposed with the KKK ceremony going on and both of them going back and forth and back and forth. And it was just the building of the tension 
and of the story. Spike Lee did such a good job in portraying this and just really grabbing us, wrenching our emotions and saying, hey, you need to really pay attention to this because here is this horrible, sad thing being told and here is utter insanity and just ignorance and disgustingness being promoted and look at their laughing and their crying and that should never have happened and this certainly should never be happening. There's one point in the film where I thought it was just a little too long and there was a scene that was almost unnecessary that I didn't feel that it was adding to the narrative of what was going on, at least at first glance. It takes place inside a dance club and you have all of these African Americans who are just dancing. And that's all it really is, is they're just singing and dancing and just going back and forth. And at first I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? It's not really progressing the story any. But once I really started to think about it, no, that was necessary for the film because what it's doing is it's setting up the culture. It's showing us who these people are as a people, as a culture, that they love to have fun, that they love to be with each other and with people, and that they can have a great time. The movie is two hours and 15 minutes long, and that sounds like a long time because it is a long time. But for me, I didn't feel the time at all. I was just completely sucked into the narrative, and I was absolutely loving everything that I was seeing. And because it kept me laughing, and then it tugged at my emotions, and then it made me laugh again, and then it made me sick to my stomach, and then it made me laugh again, and then it made me tense. And so all of these back and forth, this changing of emotions, really kept me going. And so I didn't feel the time at all. I wasn't looking at my watch. I wasn't even like, hey, let's go. What's going on? No, no. This is awesome. The film ends with an image of the American flag upside down, and that is a sign of extreme distress or danger to life. How poignant is that? That is what America is facing right now, and what the black people specifically are facing, this extreme distress and danger to their lives. Now I say, if you saw this film, and at the end you weren't shaken up and thinking a lot about it, then you weren't really paying attention, and you should go back and rewatch it again, because it is a thought-provoking film, that it really should cause some discussion within our culture of what's right and what's wrong and how we're actually dealing with things, and look, we think they're getting better, but I'm not so sure they are. Black Klansman had me laughing out loud and shaking my head and sick to my stomach all at the same time. I am so glad that I saw it. There is no sex or nudity, there is a lot of violence and a lot of profanity. I give it five out of five couches. I'd love to know what your favorite social commentary is. Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.